Good afternoon. My name is Chris Perzicki, uh, and I will be discussing the uh, William Crowther version of adventure and um, how it uh, created some of the foundational perspectives and approaches to video games that we see today This uh, through a legacy of uh, what I call um, place or genius loci. Uh, before kicking off, I do want to say thank you to the organizers and volunteers that put together Neroscope. I know this is quite a um, been a, an interesting year, and I cannot say how much I appreciate a that you uh, have continued to uh, put on this amazing event, but also to be a part of it. It's uh, thank you for that. All right, so. Uh, again, my name is Chris Perzicki. I am a lecturer at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where last year I finished my uh, PhD, where my dissertation was on uh, place and placemaking and this uh, spirit of place that uh, computer games have, I argue, always had a, a very strong connection to. And although in the dissertation I confess that uh, adventure was a very small part of that, it was part of that foundation. So this is an opportunity for me to expand on that a little bit and uh, think about adventure, how important and crucial it has been to uh, not just early game development, uh, but also games as they currently exist. So uh, I'm going to jump right into it. All right, so I don't want to spend too much time talking about the history of adventure. I, I guess I assume a little that um, if you're if you're watching this, you probably have some knowledge of adventure's background. Uh, but really, what I want to focus on, as far as the history goes, is um, Crowther's personal history of what what we know of it. So, you know. It, Crowther uh, was a defense contractor. Uh, he had worked on, he was part of a development team that worked on ARPANET, obviously the, the foundation for our internet that's uh, holding our lives together for the last couple months. Uh, in the early 70s, he, uh, Crowther was also a, he and his wife were caving enthusiasts. Um, he had created a simulation of Bed Quilt Cave, which at the time had not been incorporated into the Mammoth Cave uh, system. So uh, I think in the 70s, uh, um, he, Nelson points out, mentions that he had created a simulation of a Bed Quilt Cave. Now this is very, it's a good distinction to make here that he had made, uh, he had already had prior to this a simulated space, a rendition of uh, a representation of a cave system. So he had that in his belt already. Also, as Nelson points out, he had a lot of um, that caving jargon in his mind as he was uh, building these things, right? So we have terminology like rooms. Uh, and I want to kind of throw in there that these that there's a very significant attachment to uh, the spaces that he's creating. Okay, so now this is, and I'll t discuss this mentioned later. But um, up until this point, you know, we've 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 had games for sure. Uh, Adventure is not certainly not the first game, but it's one where we st where where space becomes a fundamental component in that that space starts to become embedded with particular value systems. All right. Uh, his, uh, partner in caving enthusiasm, uh, and, and wife at the time, Patricia Crowther, uh, also, in a, uh, I would probably a more, even more accomplished, uh, spelunker or cave diver. Um, she was crucial in connecting that, those systems as, in, in Mammoth, but unfortunately, she got involved with one of the uh, other members of these expeditions, and they eventually they got divorced. So this uh, would certainly put a damper on anyone's love of caving. Um, certainly that pr prompted a disconnect from this uh, pastime that they had shared together. Uh, something even more importantly, what they shared together were two daughters who uh, were Crowther's um, relationship with them was limited to 
uh, those times where they were allowed to visit. Okay. Another interest uh, was developing at the time uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which he had played with a number of notable figures. Uh, so this, through all of this, uh, the combination of all of these things, uh, Crowler starts put, putting together adventure. Uh, here is not just a simulation, but a simulation that's uh, flavored with the themes of Dungeons and Dragons, the fantasy themes, but also the, uh, but more importantly, his relationship with his daughters. This was a game he was creating for them, and it's something that they would play on those weekends where they were staying with him. So there's that's kind of the history of adventure. So where does uh, and I'll before c connecting this to a place, it's important to start thinking about what exactly is place. Now, games are usually uh, more often than not, at least discussed as spaces, uh, virtual spaces, simulated spaces, representational spaces. Uh, so, um, Orsett and uh, later on Monfort talked about the you know use the labyrinth as a, as metaphors. We've got Jesper Yule, uh, Miguel Scar talking about uh, games as uh, spaces. Uh, one of my favorite passages, Richard Bartle, uh, in designing virtual worlds, was um, prob maybe not the certainly the the uh, strongest advocate for games as places. But even Bartle, when as he's uh, elaborating on this position confuses a little uh, confuses space with place and though he's right the language that he uses later on in his uh, chapter there it does start to, to conflate um, architecture and structures with the more value-laden um, systems and cultures that we uh, use when we're talking about place so what exactly is place? Well, um, I don't have that much time to go into it. So a brief, all too brief summary. Uh, to, some things to keep in point. We, we turn to geography now. This is They are the um, proponents of uh, the theorists of place. Uh, Edward Casey uh, is probably one of the most uh, noted geographers who have really talked about place, advocated for place as something that uh, we got away from over time, but he, 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 throughout his career, has advocated for us to return to place and the spirit of place. Uh, as Casey mentions, uh, you cannot have space without place. Space always emerges from, uh, from place. Uh, we cannot have this room without the value systems that created it, the uh, the, the the historical context, the cultural, the, the, the people, um, all of that creates the space, any space that we're inhabiting. So, uh, to, uh, so how we got from the spirit of place, the genius loci, it ha happened much, much longer ago, enlightenment period type stuff, where we had talked about spirit of place for generations, but with enlightenment and more of a focus on rationality, we started focusing on, rather than the genius, the spirit, we started focusing more on loci the, of, of, of place, those coordinates, those, um, the structures, right? So, that kind of shift happened some time ago, and in uh, technology, computer games have largely uh, maintained that that movement. So, what we've been seeing over the last twenty years is more of a push for recognizing and perceiving that spirit of place, that genius loci, and to do that, it really means being in the world and participating and being open and being vulnerable. And you might start to see where games really start to excel at this. Let's be a little more specific. Uh, for my research, this uh, came up with kind of a conceptual visualization model that to help me kind of, kind of see what I'm talking about here. Now, this is kind of an abbreviated version. There are a few more levels to this, but just focusing on this uh, particular, more of a uh, more of a concrete 
model. First, you know, starting from uh, lower order and moving our way out, the setting, and you could, this is where the distinction between space really happens, the setting is the least important. While we certainly, uh, a place is con can be contained or envisioned within a space, we certainly don't need that space to inhabit a place, right? Um, think of you know, recall that those feelings of uh, vacation, or even better, think about, you know, you had a great experience at a conference or a convention, you had some great, had some great meetings and uh, met some great people, you know, that th that's place, right? So those are the events, those are the happenings and actions, right? So while uh, this is kind of an interesting situation, Neroscope this year, you know, we don't ha necessarily have a setting to work with, but the place of Neroscope is still very much alive and well. And that occurs through the happenings and actions, the workshops, etc. All right, and through that, this is how we build a community and make those connections. Um, those values that develop from those connections are the blood of place, okay? So... Let's think of, go back to, oops, let's go back to adventure. So, and a lot of this is kind of at the surface, uh, you know, through the work of uh, Jers and, let's see, um, Mar and Monfort and Lassard. We've got a lot of great work on, uh, on the Crowther and the development of adventure. But see, let's, if we apply this to place, we really Crowther's really focusing on those nurturing of relationships. Uh, you know, he has he has made comments about adventure not being a, a um, for a while not hugely significant. He was a, a little bit irate with Woods for messing with it, uh, adding those inventory systems that we now rely on. But look look at what. Uh, really was in the, that earliest version of adventure. Okay, we've got this narration. This is Crowther speaking specifically to his daughters, right? So you get the humor, you get that personality. I believe the, one of the quotes was, is very much him. Um, but there's also the space, uh, the, the, the cave system that he knew that he could, uh, he could simulate and, and produce algorithmically or, um, sorry, computationally. But then in, within that space, creating those happenings, creating those interactions with this, not just the space, but the, the uh, fantasy inhabitants, you know, make this playful place, this toy that it was creating for his daughters. And then later on, uh, just circumstance, happenstance, he throws it out there and people start playing it, right? Uh, and I don't want to get too much into this portion of it uh, because the development community that grows from this is certainly important. But also, even that community, just he and his two daughters, I think was really the, um, I, is, I think, the most important set of values that really falls. In, you know, this is why adventure, like um, playing through this recently, adventure gets lost on, I think, a current player. Now, Crowther has said it was aimed at developers, but there's there are some things that are so cryptic that even a problem-solving uh, whiz developer may not have entirely been appreciative of uh, if they weren't uh, part of that uh, family unit. All right, so what is this legacy? Legacy of placemaking is uh, almost every game that you see out there is this, uh, these, um, let's see, go back, uh, the, the narration, navigation, interaction, and collaboration. Uh, from Zork, obviously there are connections. We go to Lambda Mu, all the, and this goes into Ultima 4. Uh, Richard Garriott's just uh, probably... Uh, even more emboldened value system, literally built into built into a game, and then of course you've got uh, World of Warcraft, and then uh, something I've been playing recently, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where you can create your own stories in that space. Now, you're doing, uh, or even current games are taking up a lot of what the value systems that Crowther was after. So. So we have a ind independent scene that's uh, 
burgeoning because of this. The, the, we have the tools now, uh, especially with interactive fiction, to create places for our readers. Um, but also games have, as games move into more platforms, uh, it becomes more of a concern because we do have a situation where, uh, and another geographer, Yifu Tuan, talks about topophilia, where it's this love of um, place that can be, that could serve to feed the ego. And uh, I would argue that this is, you know, while we have placemaking as certainly a boon uh, that favors, you know, not just world building, but connections with others, uh, those connections can also become, uh, especially, we, you know, we look around, we have a, a t the toxic facets of game culture, this kind of exclusivity, the ego nurturing uh, portion or facet aspects of uh, gameplay. Uh, this comes from a sense of place that has that becomes a um, a love of itself, kind of feeding off of itself. So, uh, anyway, again, thank you to the uh, organizers for Nariscope. Uh This is uh, fantastic. Uh, have a great rest of the conference.